Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be talking about simplifying radicals. So here we have an example where we have negative 3 times the square root of 28. Anytime you're simplifying radicals, you always want to use perfect squares or perfect cubes, depending on the radical you're dealing with. So here we have no index, so this is understood to be a square root, so we want to work with perfect squares. If we see a 3 in the index, that means this is a cube root, and we want to work with perfect cubes. So here, when we're simplifying this radical, we want to look for the largest perfect square that can divide into 28 and give me a whole number. So that is going to be 4. So here what we have is negative 3 times the square root of 4 times, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say what's 28 divided by 4, and that's going to give me 7. So now I can simplify this because 4 is a perfect square, so this is going to be negative 3 times 2 times the square root of 7. So here I have negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6 root 7, and this is going to be my simplified radical. So here I can put a box around this, and that will be my solution. Next over here we have 4 times the square root of 384. So same thing, we're going to say 4 times, and we want to see what's the largest perfect square that can go into 384 and give me a whole number. And that is going to be 64. So here we have the square root of 64 times the square root of 6. And now we know what the square root of 64 is. That is going to be 8. So here we have 4 times 8 times the square root of 6. 4 times 8 is 32. So here, I'm going to write that a little neater. So we have 32 times the square root of 6, and this is going to be our simplified radical. Now let's work with the cube root. Don't let the negatives bother you, because with square roots, you can't take the square root of a negative number. But you can take the square root, or excuse me, you can take the cube root of a negative number. The reason you can't take the square root of a negative number is because you can't think of two numbers that are exactly the same and you multiply together to get negative. Because a negative times a negative is a positive and a positive times a positive is a negative. So you cannot take the square root of a negative number, but I can take the cube root of a negative number. Because let's say I had negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. So the idea here is the same. We're still thinking what's the largest perfect cube that could go in to 96. So here we're going to have 8 times the cube root of negative 8 times the cube root of 12. Now, here's why we say negative 8 and not 8. We don't, when we simplify a radical, we don't really want this negative to still be under the index, right? Or, to, excuse me, to be under the radical sign. We want the negative to be outside. We only want positive numbers under the radical sign. So here we have 8 times negative 2 times the cube root of 12. So this is going to give us negative 16 times the cube root of 12. And this will be my simplified cube root. Same thing here. We have negative 3 times the cube root. And we're looking for the largest perfect cube that can go in to 189. And that's going to be 27. And then 189 divided by 27, that is going to give us 7. So the cube root of 27, that is 3. So here we have negative 3 times 3 times the cube root of 7. So our solution is going to be negative 9 times the cube root of 7. 
and that will be our simplified radical. All right, that's going to be all for this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next video.